So I left off last night. I finally got all of my pieces bent. Um, I had a, a few minor, minor setbacks, but uh, that's all right. It, it's part of the process. So anyways, I, I got eight, eight slats and I lost three. So that's, that's still pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Pretty good for me at least. I'm gonna start putting in my cross members here. And in total, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of them. And the ones running across the bottom of the sled are gonna be spaced out every 15 inches. And you know, I guess I'm kind of thinking that when, when you're sitting on here, you don't, you don't wanna be sitting on one of these slats. So you know, if, if my you know, measurements were right, every person that's sitting on here should be sitting kind of right in the middle of these slats. And then up on the top, over this curl, I'm gonna have, like I had mentioned before, you know, kind of a breadboard uh, mahogany cap kind of going over that, which is going to well, be a breadboard. <laughs> it's gonna uh, fit over the top and the bottom of these slats. So let me start getting the mahogany milled up and getting those fit. But for mounting these, I'm gonna be using inch and a quarter number 12 stainless, or stainless head screws. And I'm gonna be running the screws up from the bottom, from the bottom side, countersinking so that the heads are flush, and then tapping into here. Now, if I had number 10 screws, that's what I would probably use. Number 12s just seem a little bit of you know, overkill, but it, it's what I've got. And it, it, it'll work fine. Um, it's going to be face down, so you won't even see them. <laughs> so I'm going to actually start up at the, uh, at the front of the sled where it's starting to curl, uh, just because that's, that's where the, the most, uh, you know, I guess monkeying around is going to have to be done. You know, some of the slats, the curves are going to have to be kind of pushed in a little bit, and I think that with, uh, with what has to be done up at the front, that's going to some slightly affect the, you know, the length on some of these slats. So if I were to come in and kind of anchor in the bottoms or you know, the back half of the sled, I think that's gonna make it that much more difficult for me to do the, you know, any adjustments I need to do up uh, you know, in the curl here. So I've already come in and countersunk for all, for all the screw heads and I've put two in just to make sure that I you know, got, every, got these countersunk to the right diameter, I guess. And I, I have a piece of mahogany on the back side. Those slats that were those uh, reinforcing strips. You, you, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I've already got one of those mounted on the back side. And now I'm getting ready to pre drill through here into the mahogany for the screws. Now I'm going to be keeping, I've got all this clamp together. I'm going to be loosening my clamps just a little bit. I still want to hold things together tightly, but as these uh, battens, get sucked in, I want uh, you know, the, the, enough stress or enough pressure off of here so that it'll allow those battens to suck in. So that's, uh, that's the plan. I'm, I'm gonna start with the, uh, well, with the problemed battens first, the ones that are, I guess, the ones that are giving me the most gap on the backside from this piece of mahogany. So that would be this one next. And I've come through and marked on my drill where I need to stop drilling so that I don't actually <laughs> poke through the piece of mahogany in the back. So let's go ahead and if this one works, the rest are going to go pretty slick. I've got my chuck preset on the drill at you know a pretty low tension. I don't want to over torque this going in. Please work. And actually at this point, I'm gonna do the rest by hand. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these, turn these heads so that all the, all the screw heads are going to be facing the same direction all the way down. Just looks nice.
Cool. That worked, that worked very, very well. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through and repeat the process on all the rest of these. You know, it's funny that when you're trying to figure something out, it never really dawns on you until you're already, well, three quarters done. <laughs> Looking at, uh, I'm getting ready to mount my last mahogany uh, thing. And, you know, it just dawned on me. I started, you know, looking at this thinking, well, okay. Yeah, I'm getting ready to start, you know, kind of laying out where I'm going to be running my, you know, there's rope. On the, on the top, and it runs through these little uh, mahogany strips. Well, if I've got a screw here and a screw here, like I've done all the way around, where am I going to run that rope through? <laughs> so on this last one, of course, rather than putting a screw here and here, I'm going to put one right in the middle, this on the top plank and on the bottom plank, and the rest are still going to get two. It's probably way overbuilt, but, you know, I don't want this thing to fall apart. I want it to be lo around long after I'm gone. So on all these other ones, what I'm going to end up doing is, is coming in, backing both of these out. I'm going to throw a couple of plugs in here. You know, just basically cover them up, make them go away and then tap one single hole with a screw. So, you know, it's you know, a little step backwards to keep on moving forwards, but, you know, hey, if that's really the, my big mistake that I made on this, that I've realized so far, <laughs> that's not too bad. I've, I've never built one of these. I'm just kind of winging it as I go. So, I've gotten all these in now, you know, all the way around here. So now I just want to make sure, I want to get you know, I want to get this bow done. Before I left tonight, I wanted to have this bow part, the bow, this forward part of the sled, uh, you know, capped off. And then at that point, then I'm fine to let it sit for a week, you know, just to dry. But for right now, it's getting towards the end of the night. It is 7 o'clock. And before I start monkeying with this too much, I want to flatten all these slats out. So, I've got one, one piece clamped across here. I'm going to take this other one, put it along the bottom, sandwich the two together, and then I can start making my cuts. So, that's the, that's the dog and pony trick right now. I wanted to have a 10 inch curl on here, so I need to raise this up about a half an inch. And I do that by adjusting these two clamps that are giving me down pressure. Alright, let's make sure that we're square here. So now I'm just measuring, I'm going to mark the length that I need to uh, cut my mortise into this piece. And then I'm going to take it over to the mortiser and knock it out. Actually, I decided to cut this to three inches instead of four. Four just looked a little, a little over the top. <laughs> so I went with three. Oh, here we go. It's a little tight. I'm gonna probably mess with it tomorrow, but I'm gonna lose some. I'm gonna lose some thickness on the actual body of the sled when I give everything a sanding. So I'm gonna leave it out. Leave it like it is for tonight. It's a good snug fit. And now I'm just gonna do a little spoke shave work. Just, I don't know why, it's the end of the night. 
Why not? Looks good. Let's throw the clamps on here just for tonight, just to kind of hold it down a little bit so it doesn't relax on me. And I'm going home. I got a lot done today. I'm gonna take some pictures first, but yeah, calling it a day. Well, I decided to spare you the monotony of, uh, of a bunch of sandings. <laughs> so I didn't show any of that, but what I've done is I've, I've come through and, and sanded and flattened down the bottom as well as the tops. And I started rounding over some of the, the mahogany or the, you know, the slats, the mahogany highlight areas. And I've gotten this kind of breadboard cap finished and it, it looks really sharp. I'm really happy with this. Now I need to come through and remove each of these cross slats and round those over so that they're, you know, I guess, a little easier on the eyes and a little easier on your butt <laughs> too, I guess. So, well, here's the finished sled. Uh, well, finished minus the, uh, the rope that I'm going to be running through here and the pad, which is on order. <laughs> So hopefully that'll be here uh, on time before Christmas, which is a week away. Um, well, I guess I, I'm pretty much kind of showing every step that I've gone, you know, uh, as I was building this. The only thing that I didn't show was uh, I decided to add two little runners, I guess, along the bottom. Just, well, for a couple of reasons. One, to, you know, just to kind of help protect the bottom a little bit but also to help it track a little bit better as it's going down the, going down the hill. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna be launching my daughter <laughs> down the hill by herself by any means, but uh, it, it would be nice to know that, you know, it's, it's going to go fairly straight <laughs> and not go sidewards and, well, result in a bad day, so, for everybody. So, uh, that was the only other, uh, thing that I've added on that I didn't, uh, didn't video, it's just kind of a last minute um, thought. If I had to guess, I'd say total time that I had into this is about maybe 20, maybe 20 hours, but that was also recording, you know, doing, the, doing this video, which usually, I don't want to say it almost doubles the time, but it, it definitely adds a lot of time. So I'd say if I were to just go ahead and knock this out, um, maybe in a weekend, I think that would be a pretty safe bet. Well, it's Christmas Eve and Santa's just a little stressed right now. I, as you can see, I've gotten everything finished. Uh, I, well, I applied the finish <laughs> and everything, everything's put together for its final assembly. I ended up finishing this with, uh, I rolled on two coats of uh, West System clear epoxy, top, bottom, you know, everything got two coats of, of the, uh, the clear epoxy. Sanded that down and then uh, went over top of that with, it's, uh, it's a fairly new product from Pettit. It's their uh, Z-Spar, it's their Captain's satin varnish. It's not a high gloss. And the reason that I went with a satin is because, you know, this is, this is something that's meant to be used. It's, it's going to, you know, it's going to get scratched up. It's going to get dinged and whatever. And if I went with a high gloss finish, every single little blemish is, is going to basically jump out and slap you in the face. And I didn't want that. I, you know, I wanted something that's going to be able to, uh, you know, wear well and easy to touch up. And uh, this, this uh, I'm, I'm really happy with this. This is the first time I've tried this product and it's, I'm very happy with it. It's, I sprayed the, uh, the, you know, my final top coats and I sprayed on two, two coats of this, thinned it down maybe 5% and it sprayed beautifully. It laid down real nice, flowed out and it's got a nice, well, a nice satin finish, <laughs> which is per exactly what I was looking for. Now one caveat, of, of this stuff is, you know, typically your satin finishes, they're strictly designed for interior use. They don't have any UV filters or blockers, inhibitors built into it. And that was something I, you know, I, I gave some thought to, uh, you know, as far as, you know, whether I should use this or not. And basically what it boiled down to for me was that th this isn't going to be sitting out in the sun 
all day, every day. It's, it, realistically, it's going to get used, I don't know, I mean, if we're lucky, probably a few hours a month uh, for about three or four months of the year. The rest of the time, it's going to be stored indoors and, and, and out of the sun. So for that little bit of time, I feel perfectly fine using, uh, using this finish, although it's only intended for indoor use. You know, it has a little bit of a backup. The, uh, the clear epoxy that I used, uh, the West system with their 207 clear hardener, that does have UV filters built into, the, into the, the concoction there. So there's still some protection here. It's just not on the very top coat. And I'm happy with it. So I got the, uh, the finish was sprayed on two days ago. Yesterday, yesterday. I sprayed it on yesterday morning. And it's, it, it tacked up real nice. Within four hours, I was able to handle this without any problems. And the thing that I was really waiting on was my line. This is, uh, um, there's going to be a line that runs between each of these cleats up to the front of this curl, back over to the other side, and down. And that's what I was waiting on for the final assembly, because i got to run this, uh, i got to run the line, and then I can attach my pad, and this is finished. So, I was a little excited when the, when the line actually showed up today, because it was supposed to be here, like, last, supposed to be here last Friday. Today is Monday, Christmas Eve. <laughs> I don't like to cut things that short or that tight, but it, it is what it is. It came in, and I can, I can uh, make this work. Now, as soon as I got it, I tried to take the line and run it through each of these holes that I already pre-drilled. The line that I ordered is a, it's a 6 mil line, 6 mil thickness, which is about a quarter inch. And I drilled all my holes a quarter inch. <laughs> in theory, it sounds perfect, right? But... To get this, uh, the, you know, the bitter end of this actually fed through the hole, it, it, it kind of causes a little bit of problems. But I found a workaround. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sheathing, the outer core, I'm going to pull it back to expose, I don't know, a couple inches of the, of the actual core. I'm going to cut this short, and then I'll be able to pull this outer sheathing back over top of this coring, it'll give me a thinner tip for feeding through the hole. And once it's through the hole, it, 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 you know, it goes back and forth without any problems. But it's just getting it started uh, took a little bit of, well, it took me a little bit to figure, you know, to figure this one out. So now I'm going to feed it up through this hole. try and get this knot tied as tightly as I can to the back of this cleat. All right, now this excess is just simply going to be tied on to, well, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere up in here as a kind of a towing, towing line. So I'm dying to see, I want to put the pad in here and get the pad tied down. So let me grab that and put it in place. And I just, this is what I've been waiting to see for like, well, since I started building this. This is the part that I really, really like about doing projects. Seeing them get finished. <laughs> All right, let's see, I just got, it's a nice pad. I got it, I got it from L.L. Bean. Um, red or green? What do you say? I got red line. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the green. Put the tag in the back. Done. I love it. All right, very cool. Well, this this pretty much wraps up this project. Um, if you have any questions on anything that I did, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, you know, on uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment below the video here. Uh, you can contact me through my website boltworkstoday.com, um, Twitter, Facebook, uh, any, pretty much whatever, whatever is easiest for you. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Oh, you're probably not going to be seeing this until New Year, New Year's Eve. 
So have a safe, uh, have a safe night, everybody. Be safe. And uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do.